it's such a small town that you I mean there's one Catholic church, so of course you see a lot of familiar faces. You mean um, there's one HEB, there's one Walmart, there's you know, there's only so many schools here that your kids go to. Um, everybody runs into somebody. Everybody here. You mean everybody goes to the river on the weekends. Everybody, you know, there's only one movie theater. The Uvalde Migrant and Seasonal Head Start Center has been here for at least 26 years. ECD stands for Early Childhood Development, and what we do in our Early Childhood Development programs in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas is we serve babies. So when children are six weeks old, we can take them into our program all the way up until when they get ready to transition to kindergarten. The first five years of a child's life are the most important years for the foundation of who they are, how they learn, how we can assess and support them. And what we do is we educate, we um, create family goals, we look at health and nutrition and development, we have curriculum, we have parent curriculum, we have child curriculum, we have curriculum for the bus, we provide transportation, and so we really get the child, babies, infants, toddlers, preschoolers, and their, the family that comes with them, we get them ready for life, for school and life, that's what we do. I was born and raised in Uvalde and I actually attended this Head Start Center back before it was uh, Chicanos por la Casa, and now both of my children go to school here. So it's, it's like home. It's very welcoming. The staff here at the Head Start Center shows every child the love that they are needing. I get questions throughout the whole week, whether it's Monday or it's Friday, you know, Mom, when am I going back to school? It's relieving for me to see that they are comfortable in a position away from me. I guess I would describe it as love. We come on the air tonight after another mass shooting in America, another community that will forever mark time as before today and after. This is a small town that is in mourning. As we now know, 19 students were killed in the rampage, two faculty members also killed. Everybody is impacted here. We're all connected to that school in some way or form. So right after the incident, a lot of mental health programs were like throughout Uvalde. We were trying to get through all 19 funerals first, and then slowly the families were coming to us and saying, I need the help. I need, I need the counseling. I myself am dealing with anxiety. I myself am dealing with playing out the tragedy in my head, you know? So it was a lot of that. We stayed on board to keep up with the staff to see how they were feeling, how they were going through things. Um, we had staff members that were taking the counseling themselves so they would be able to say like, I myself am doing this counseling, so this was where I went. And that's why we're able to help the community because we ourselves are going through it. We're seeking the counseling, we're getting the, the support from the community. We're attending the, the events that are happening here in Uvalde. Some of the staff had children in the classrooms that helped others out and our survivors and experienced it as well and so they're also dealing with their own home and their own family and their own child who is also suffering from experiencing and surviving um, what occurred. Many of the children that were affected, children that were murdered, um, were part of this program. Staff here shared pictures of um, Rogelio Maite um, uh, shared stories of, of knowing their families, um, their experiences with the children as they transition, transitioned into elementary school. So the CPLC Uvalde Migrant Season Head Start Center that we're sitting in right now is just blocks away from Robb Elementary School and these children would transition into um, that school eventually. 
So after the shooting, it's hard to get her out of the house. She cries, she gets scared, she gets anxiety. She'll have panic attacks. She puts chairs in front of the doors every night. She has um, flashbacks that he's coming for her, that she sees him. Two days after, the staff here, they actually made a, like a gift basket for her. Um, they provided her a, a tablet so she can do her uh, virtual therapy instead of us having to go to San Antonio. So they saved us gas money, they saved up trips, they saved you know, her PTS going up. She, they, they helped more than anything. So without that tablet, we wouldn't be able to have her home you know, getting comfortable and taking her time to be able to go out. So today being here is her second time out in public. This lady always told me about like, you had to like be good, you go somewhere, be next to your mom, be next to your family, don't leave the site. So I did that so I feel good. And I wouldn't, I will just be like, inside my house, hiding under my bed. All death is hard. I don't think it gets any easier, but the way that it happened wasn't correct, you know? So with the aftermath of that, I ended up taking it off a whole month after that situation. And I did that because I didn't have the help with the kids for me to still work. And I didn't feel ready to leave them. There was one day, I think it was like almost a week after the incident had happened and Pearl had called and she was like, you know, if you need anything, she's like, I don't care if it's food or if it's clothes or if it's just somebody to talk to. Whatever you need, we can help. And that's when I told her, I was like, look, I've been out of work for, you know, a little while and I don't know how I'm gonna do it. And she was like, we can help you with food. That's not a problem. So they did. And I'm very grateful for it because without that, I don't know where it could have gone. We've been able to start to figure out what the needs are um, through conversation and them sharing what their child is experiencing that other parents are also sharing and, and and now we're able to sort of put start to begin to put plans in place so it became about finding out what they are ready for and what they found out is that they're ready they're ready to send their children here because they feel secure they feel safe they trust and they know the staff here a family has actually reached out to us and said we're not sending our baby to the public school, we're sending our babies back to y'all because we know they're safe here. And when they told us that, we were like, well, of course, you mean we accepted them with open arms and we're accepting them back. But like I said, it's kind of like, it's that fine line of like, you see that sadness that you want them to go on. I mean, you want them to grow and you want them to trust the system. It feels amazing that the center here has awesome staff because She's nine, she hasn't been here for years, and they still care and thought about her, so. A community as a whole, it hit us all. I feel that with them actually coming to us parents for the fact that they helped me, like just that kindness, it, it was overwhelming for me. I'm grateful for it. My optimism comes from Pearl, San Juanita, Noemi. And that's what the family see. We're gonna get through it. It's gonna take a long time. Um, but we're here to serve and teach and get these children ready for their forever life and change families for the next forever generations. And we're gonna do that. Um, we also are going to be sensitive to however long it takes as we move through the ramifications and consequences of this tragedy. If you say you need help, 
you've always there. They're sending you meals. They're, they're trying to assist you every way they can. We're all still Uvalde, and we're trying to get back to that, being connected, united. So we're here at the event, our uh, Healing Together event. Everybody's happy, there's face painting, there's games, there's community members here. There's uh, children from the center, so it's a wonderful atmosphere here. We've been working on this event since the summer. You know, we've been trying to get together and thinking of a day, thinking of a time, thinking of what the, what the event meant to us, what we wanted the outcome to be, what we envisioned, what, you mean just, Everything and anything we were thinking about, but we wanted the main purpose to be happiness. We wanted to be joy back to the community. We wanted to be smiling faces back to the community. We wanted the escape from everything that's going on in Uvalde. To hear the children talking and laughing and running and the conversation happening, the smiles, the energy is amazing. This is exactly what we wanted to bring together, tap into, and convey today. We wanted the community to know that we're here, to know that this is a safe space. I'm proud of Uvalde Center staff. They've done an amazing job. People from all over Texas in our program came in to support. This is a community that we want to rebuild. This is about healing and coming together. Pearl says, this is the Uvalde she knows right here. And so that's what we want to tap into again. So. I'm very grateful, very grateful. This is what Uvalde is. It's getting together, it's enjoying the moments. It's like going to a family barbecue. This is what you get. You mean, this is a family here. It's everybody mingling together, everybody talking together, laughing, everybody's in, you mean, enjoying memories. Everybody's just enjoying the moment and, and, and enjoying each other.